people ask what is a mandala really the simple version uh, mandala means circle or completion in Sanskrit and it's just a way to create and bring together uh, your intentions uh, originally it was created through the Buddhist religion it uh, oversees various countries and cultures and really has a lot of meaning behind it uh, in regards to the mandala itself, it's a form of circles and the outside being somewhat our static life and the things around us and the motion and the noise and all of that. And as we go towards the center, it's the enlightenment and knowledge and uh, power that we have within. So that's what you're seeing in mandalas. Today, we're just going to learn how to create a beautiful piece of art using either uh, a flat surface or rocks. These are something I find just really beautiful to look at. Mandalas are also very therapeutic. So for people that just need to calm down and relax a little bit, it's kind of a meditative point of view. And I find that myself in creating something simple and small, it packs a real punch and while doing it, it just kind of calms me down too. So I'm going to walk you through how to make a mandala, give you some little hacks and tricks to, to help you through it. It's very simple uh, from the beginning so that anyone can create it. I want to say that this particular activity is very good for perfectionists because it's all about symmetry. It's making one half complement the other half with a very symmetrical form. I myself am not a perfectionist, so you'll be seeing a lot of my imperfections as we go through, uh, but I want to give you this gift and something to create and take with you. There are lots of different ways to make a mandala. So I'm going to start with some supplies. There's really not a lot, but you'll see on the, the screen some of the different supplies that you can use. We've got rocks mat board or a hard surface type of paper really thick and strong dotting tools which we'll go over individually in a little bit paints of various colors uh, and acrylic is the best paper towels or a wet wipe of some sort paper a hole punch this is going to help you uh, create a stencil a drawing compass and a pencil also will help you get you started these are things that you can find around the house, uh, various tools, you can make some up yourself too. So what I'm going to go over first is how to create a stencil. Now you want, when you're making a mandala, as I said it's very symmetrical, you're going to need to create a stencil. And you can buy stencils easily or you can use a drawing compass and a protractor. Now this is going to give you the specific detailed angle. It's going to make it very symmetrical. So by using a drawing compass, you want to cross over, if you have a square piece of paper or mat board, you're going to cross over the corners and that's going to give you the center. So then you can take your drawing compass, set that in the center and use your pencil and I have a dark matte board because I think it shows up better in this light um, but I also have a light colored pencil chalk can help you do this too so whatever works so that you can see it and know that you can I've done it extra dark on here so you can see the lines but you can just make it simple and do a couple of marks as you go around so that you have reference so I've made a small circle a larger circle and an even larger circle concentric circles around and they don't have to be equally spaced these are just reference circles that you know uh, are equidistant from the center then I've used my protractor to create my cross lines my cross hatches and this is going to give you a pie or pizza 
if you want to call it that. So I've laid it across my half line from my center and marked at the 45 from there. So you create your, your stencil that way. Now I'm going to show you another little hack to make a stencil, especially on rocks, because they're not flat and they're a little harder to work with. Again, I've seen stencils for larger rocks. Mm -hmm. It's like a silicone stencil that lays flat, but then it wraps around your rock and you can mark the lines. But something you can do is take a sticky note. You're going to fold it corner to corner. Basically what we're making is a snowflake. Corner to corner again, corner to corner again. And you're going to use your hole punch. So this is where your hole punch comes in. You want to find that spot center, centered between these two lines and you're going to punch a hole. And it can be a little challenging once the, because the paper is so thick if you're making it super thick. And I'm gonna do one closer to the center and I'm gonna do a little further out as well. I also cut the center off so that when I unfold it, and with this I kind of cut the, the corner, I circled it so that when I open it, I have, looks like a snowflake but it's really a stencil. And this you can do, you can lay this on your paper or you can lay it over a rock. The hole is pretty large. You can make your holes, use a bigger hole punch and you can paint to make your stencil or you can again, just use a light pencil or chalk and you've got your circles there to help you, to help guide you. So those are some different ways to make stencils for your pieces. Now, now that we've got our stencils, I want to talk about some dotting tools. Dotting tools are anything that you can find around your house. There are dotting tools that you can purchase. They're either considered to be mandala dotting tools or if you look at what they look like and if you like fancy nails, and you get your nails done by a professional, there are nail painting tools that you can look at. It's basically the same thing. They're tools with a, a, a ball on each end. Sometimes you have two different sizes on one tool. These work really nicely. They are not too expensive. So if you've tried your homemade tools and you wanna invest a little bit, this might be a way to go. But as for your homemade tools, Anything around the house works. I've got quite a variety of tools here. And from beginning to end, I have pencils. Just a simple pencil is great because the eraser on a new pencil works great. And you can see what I've done here is I've made some size examples. This is gonna help me while I'm creating as a reference tool to the size of the dot that I want to use. So what I've done is I've taken my homemade tool, a pencil eraser, and I've just used any, any surface to create a dot. And that's gonna give me a reference to how big an eraser is. Then I've got a large dowel. Any kind of dowel, different sizes, they come in all different sizes. So the end of a dowel, you can make a reference there. I have small dowels. I have also, for creative use, uh, a pin top. So a push pin, if you sew or anything like that, a push pin can be put into the end of an eraser and that just gives you a better handle. But I've used that as well. Uh, let's see, some magical things, paint brushes. You always use paint brushes to paint, but we're gonna use the opposite end of a paint brush and the tip of your paintbrush can create a very nice dot. And if you see on the dot board example, if you push it into one dot, it makes a large one. And without returning to the paint and you continue to dot, it gives you a, a smaller dot as you work your way through. Some interesting tools that I've used that you might not expect would be a paper clip unfolded and unbent, the end of the paper clip gives you a nice little tiny dot and that can be very helpful. 
even a dental pick. If you have any around the house, the pointy sharp end that you're supposed to maybe pick your teeth with works as a good dotting tool. And again, it makes a little teeny tiny one. Also, if you're cooking, look around your kitchen. There's all kinds of things that you can use in your kitchen that make good dots. And a skewer might be one of them. You can use the, the blunt end of the skewer, the round end, to make one dot. You can use the pointed end to make another dot. And in my examples, the skewer makes the teeniest, tiniest of little dots. So that is our dotting tools. Now, as far as paint goes, I've got acrylic paint. And this is going to be your best option, I believe. Uh, it's just got a great consistency with paints. You don't want it to be too thick and you don't want it to be too thin. Acrylic also gives you a really bright, vivid colors, which I find are great when making mandalas. If you look at look up mandalas anywhere, you're going to see a lot of bright, vivid colors. And acrylics really seem to hone that the best. So you want to make sure you're shaking up your paint really good. And to create, as far as the colors in mandalas, if you want to look at what colors can be used, there are certain colors that reflect maybe meanings behind them. Green can mean nature, um, yellow, sun. But if you're just creating artwork, just enjoy. Find colors that appeal to you, that you think are going to complement each other, uh, that just make you happy. And I'm just going to put a lot of different colors in my palette here because I'm not sure what I'm going to be using. Sometimes I just figure out and go with the, whatever mood strikes me. And for the amount of paint that you need, I'm going to go, what color? I got a, different greens. And green is my favorite color, so I'm not sure which green I'm going to go with later, but we'll try this one for now. For the amount of paint you need, it's very little. Just a dot is basically all you need for your paint. And one thing I've found with regards to just using a single little tiny dollop of paint is that as you go and you're painting your mandalas, it can dry out a little bit. So something you might want to take into consideration is having a little bit of water in a dropper nearby, if that helps. And work through that. You don't want to add too much water. Again, thick, too thick a paint will create a mound. And you'll notice that when you're dotting, it does create the mound to start with, but as it settles, it lays out flat. If you have too thin of paint, it will run. It won't create a dot at all. It's just not nice. Um, but we'll talk about mistakes later too as to how to maybe fix those issues if you have them. So as far as dotting, I'm gonna do a little bit on my mat board here. And again, I said mat board is good. It's a thick, strong, sturdy piece. It doesn't absorb the water. Uh, I tried a little bit on paper before and as I was painting, the paper absorbed it and it started to warp. So that just wasn't my favorite. Uh, I've got my tool, my dotting tool template here, so I know which tools are going to give me the, the dot size that I want. And I'll show you how to begin. Most mandalas start with uh, a center of a bright color and a larger dot because you might want to layer them. You might want to have a large dot in the center and you might want to consecutively add smaller dots. So I've got my pencil eraser and I don't know like I said I like green but I've got a green mat board so I'm probably going to go with some bright colors and when you're dipping your paint you don't want to just dunk it you want the surface just to get the tip to get a little bit of paint on it and you're going to not squish it because that pushes the paint out you just want to give it a nice little dot in the center and you can see how it started to make that mound but it will gradually spread out and make itself new. Now one thing I did not mention but is very important to have nearby is a paper towel or a wet wipe. I have both here and what these are good for is to clean your tools off as you go because you might want to have 
the same tool but a different color and you're going to be working from the center out so i'm just going to wipe that off and think about what my next color might be i kind of like this uh fuchsia looking color so for my next dot i don't i'm not a perfectionist like i said and i'm not always good at eyeballing so I'm not gonna just start and go around the circle. I've got my stencil here for a reason. So I'm gonna use those lines to help me out. And I'm gonna do one across on this side. And I'm gonna go back and retrieve a little bit more paint. And I'm gonna do one, and if it helps to turn, go ahead and turn it. I'm gonna do one on the opposite side. So, and what you can do is flip your tool over and help it to spread the paint out. A nice little trick I learned the other day. That might help too. But I'm Anna, also going a to. Question. Oh, I have a question. Yes. Yes. Would a turntable beneath the um, mat board help you in moving it around to create the dot as you're uh, working with the issue? A question about how to, using a turntable. And I think, yes, it would help you. Maybe a Lazy Susan or something like that. You might want to tape your board down so that it stays in place while it's turning. Um, but otherwise, you can just use it, um, turn it as you see comfortable. So I'm gonna do my opposite sides again, kind of making a, almost a square with the paint. And one thing that helps is if you notice like your dot wasn't as good, you can go back and dot over it. If, if you don't think it's as circular or as large as you want, you can just cover it again. So I've got my four there. Now I'm gonna put some maybe smaller dots in the middle, in between these dots. So my small dowel gives me, I'm looking at my template, to gives me a little smaller circle that I might like to go in and do some orange. Again, I'm not submerging it, I'm just getting a little bit on my tip and putting that in between. And this one looks like it's giving me a bigger, if I gotta spin it, so my brain works that way. So that I've got four kind of in the way. Nope, need a little more paint on that. So that paint's a little thick, it seems like to me. But we'll make it work. So you've almost seen, like I've almost got a square there, I'm working with a square. And some mandalas can be created from a square. You're still working from the center out. Um, but the majority of them are circles. Now, one trick that I think I like a lot, and I'm still working to master this, I'm not a professional, uh, but is using the tip of a paintbrush, like I said, to create one large dot to start and then consecutively making smaller dots. So I'll see if I can do this and make it obvious. So you can see there how, if I bring it up, it made one large dot and I just kept going and they got smaller as I went. Now, I was always confused, like what if I start there and make my next dot, it's gonna be just as big as the first one. Go ahead and dot over the first one again and that drops a little bit of paint so you'll have the same size then dots on the other side. So I go one in the beginning and then work my way over. So you can see how that kind of works there. Now to create more dots, you need, if you want to layer them, you need to make sure that this gets set aside so that it dries well enough that you can add another layer. And like I said, this is a really good therapeutic thing. It's like coloring almost, but it's with dots. And I have found that I really enjoy small projects that pack a punch. And this is one I thought would be very difficult to really get right. And what I found is it doesn't matter. 
Um, one thing that we say in our art classes is don't strive for perfection, strive for uniqueness. And I'm gonna have to say mine are very unique. So we've got a little bit started there. And as you would see, you just continue to go on out. And I'm trying to think of what other color I might want to go with. I'm trying to keep it similar colors. And it's good to find a good color palette. Um, maybe start with three or four colors and then maybe expand on that. But for the most part, it seems that mandalas have a color scheme that they stick with. And then I'm going to show you a little bit later how I just went crazy. Ah, doo -doo -doo -doo. I think I want to put some more, got the yellow there, time for some orange. So I just have to pick a dot, dotting tool that I like. And I might do some orange here. I'm gonna use my skewer and we'll see because the end of it doesn't look very round. So I'm gonna find out if it actually is round. And I have my pie, my, so I'm gonna put two dots, two little dots side by side. And you know what, I don't think I like that one so much. Let's see if I can find one that's a similar size the pin top. I think that one is about the same size. Again, I use my reference, so that's helpful. Anna, yes. another question. Another question. So perhaps you start with your patterning and the paint uh, smears or you get a little tail on one of the dots. How would you correct that? There are, it's a good question. How do you correct possible mistakes? And there are different ways to correct mistakes. So with your background, if you have on paper, one way to correct a mistake would be to, let's say you have a lump or your circle's not concentric. You want to maybe let that dry and then you can add another dot between the two or where, where that circle went out of bounds, you can put another dot right over it and then it looks like it was intentional. If you are using rocks, then you can either take a Q-tip and a little bit of water and just wipe it off, or you can take your black paint if you've painted over a rock and paint around it to create the dot again. Or, you know, I have made mistakes and so it was early enough that I didn't like it and my black paint had dried, I just took a sponge and soap and water and I washed it completely off and started over again. So that is one way to help guide you through mistakes. And you know, it's just, sometimes those mistakes are the best thing. And I'm finding out any more paint on my tool here to get the circle that I want. Well, that one did it. And I found once I started, uh, the mandalas that I was making, I was leaving a lot of space between and I think I found that the closer they are, the better. Uh, it becomes a very mesmerizing type of artwork and activity. So by creating that circle or that center and making it look almost like a mesmerizing palette, uh, by keeping them closer together, that helps with that. So let's see, and I'm gonna use the dotting tool so maybe you can see the difference between the homemade tools and the dotting tool. This one, it does leave a much smoother circle and it just, the paint falls off of it much more seamlessly. So there is a difference between the homemade tools and the dotting tools. This one just does, it feels better, but if you wanna practice before you really get into it, Go ahead and use your kitchen tools. Do, do, do. I'm gonna add some more of this in between, kind of on the sides of my, again, I have that stencil to help guide me a little bit. So I'm doing it on two sides of the line here. And I'm turning it just so that my hand doesn't cross over the paint so much. I would say use your tools to work for you. So, and if you're being left-handed, people always think you smear it. Well, if you turn it so that it works for you, you're not, you're not touching the paint. Ooh, that's coming out very nicely, I like that. 
So I'm going to go back to my eraser for another larger dot. Go back to some yellow and put that out here. Right in the center of the cross, kind of the cross beam there. And it's getting closer to where that doesn't really work, does it? Like I said, it's good for a perfectionist, but it's also just good for fun. And that's kind of starting to take shape. So you can almost see how the circles are turning into a design, even though it's just one right after the other. And so I'm gonna let that set that aside for now and talk a little bit about how you might work on the rocks. It's really not a lot different, but I could let that dry so that I can layer it a little bit too. Rocks are basically the same thing, but I find them just more interesting. I like rocks. Um, they're a little more tricky because they're not flat surface. They're a little ob obscure, oblong, and you're not, it's really difficult to find a perfectly round rock. So you've just got to create your stencil within the rock shape and work with it as best you can. So I've got a black background. You can paint your rock. For a background or you can not paint your rock. Either way works well. You can kind of see the difference between the two and depending on what colors you paint with, I think a black background just really helps things pop. I always like to do that, outline my art or use it as a background. Another type of rock that I've seen is, it's not a mandala per se, but they've used shapes and done the black background shape and then done some dotting or made a mandala within that shape itself. And it really just lends itself to making a really bright, vivid, colorful uh, picture for yourself. So, doo -doo -doo -doo. let's see, I've got, I'm gonna use my small dowel because it's a small rock. And I'm gonna try some green and blue. Just dot it in the center. And I'm gonna wipe it off. Because that's the only one I'm gonna do for that. And, I like the doo doo doo. What other colors? I like the fuchsia again. I think these colors lend themselves nicely to each other. That's going to go opposite. By doing the opposite to start with, it really gives you the symmetry that you're looking for. If you're good at eyeballing things, this really just breaks it in half so that it helps. And I'm going to do more. Instead of just doing four dots, I'm going to go all the way around the circle and fill in the pie. And we've got that down. And I'm gonna go back to my small dowel and maybe do some green because I have the black background so the green might show up a little better now. Let's see what it looks like. And I'm gonna use my stencil to give me lines to work with. And if you want the same size dot, you need to make sure you go back and dip your paint. Anna, so, another question. Another question. Wonderful. Yes, when you, when you complete your rocks, do you seal them uh, with a material afterwards to protect the dots in the uh, design? Uh, do I seal my rocks after I've completed the painting of them? Absolutely, I do seal my rocks. Any kind of spray sealant works well, and that helps to just protect it. If you're gonna put it outside uh, in a, a rock garden, definitely it helps. And it also, by putting a sealant over it, it kind of gives it a little shine. So it makes it really, really nice and it stands out that way. Yeah. Alrighty, I'm gonna use my dotting tool again, and I'm gonna add some yellow. I'm going to go with the fourth color just to give it some brightness. And we're going to put it between the green dots here. And like I said, I'm just kind of free flowing now, just seeing what's going to look good, where's it going to fit. You can decide to do it around each one or uh, alternate. 
And there you can see I got a little excited. Definitely not centered it, but I'm not worried. All right, and I'm gonna do some more. I'm gonna use the big eraser. This might be too big though. I'm gonna go back to the small dowel. Like I said, that my example board really helps to give me an idea of what I really want to, to use. just going around right now because I've done my opposite side so I've kind of got a pattern started and really that's what mandalas are they're very much a pattern so you can decide what you want your pattern to look like then we've got a nice start there kind of like that so here are some ideas on how to create your mandala Again, you let these dry and then you can add layers to them. And I've done one here, so you can see how I've done layers. This definitely does not show my perfection uh, in rock painting, but you can see how it really just creates that centrifugal look about it. Uh, I've got some other examples here. This one was fun to make. I like the colors a lot and this one's got a seal to it so you can see a little bit of that shine. And let's see what else I can show you over here. This one a friend of mine purchased so this is someone that's had a little more practice than myself but something unique that they did is they took a little gem and they glued that to the center so it really just gives a little bit of sparkle. So I thought that was really neat. They added also some little design features to it as you came towards the outside. So it's not all dots. So that was fun. So that is how you create a mandala. And from mandalas, like I said, they can help you therapeutically to just relax, calm down, um, help you find that enlightenment if that's what you're looking for. From this, I found another technique in dot painting. And this is something that I got really excited about because once I learned the technique to make mandalas, I found you could just go far and wide from there. So I've taken my dot painting and I've done different shapes and figurations, configurations. This one is just a rainbow of colors. It's the dots. It's also kind of an example board of just the sizes. And when I mentioned how using, leaving a lot of space in between, I went back and added small dots in between and that just kind of brought it together. You think it's okay to spread it out, but it just seems to leave a lot of gaps. So don't be afraid to go in there and add little dots here and there to, to overlap it and to bring it together. One, some fun that I had was this rock. It's just all kinds of dots. I just had a lot of fun trying to make the colors all, the composition and the balance work well together and the different sizes, it was just fun. So there's some practice for you if you wanna start here before you go to your mandala to give you some, some trials. And that will take you through uh, really much how to make a mandala and how to do some dot painting. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and learn some things as we went along. Thanks for joining me. And if you have any other questions or whatnot, you wanna see more programs that we offer, feel free to join us at henrico.us slash rec. And uh, have fun.